And if we have time, we'll talk about uploading to the web server. Um, if we don't have time, we'll do that on Monday. One point about browser compatibility is that is my in in my opinion, and I think this opinion will, is shared by by a lot of folks. It doesn't need a, a web page doesn't need to look identical across every platform. It just needs to be workable across every platform. So, for example, there are some CSS three features that include things like being able to round corners of the border. All right. And those are some pretty neat things. Now, those won't work on certain browsers, and those won't work on certain older browsers. But it won't break the page. In other words, the page will still look, it just won't have the nice rounded borders. It'll have the square borders. So that's okay, in my mind. So don't be overly concerned if your site doesn't look identical across platforms, but make sure that it works across platforms, and that the, the content is viewable, and the navigation works, and, and so on. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're assessing browser compatibility. Another thing that I failed to mention when talking about mobile websites is there's a whole other mobile world besides mobile websites, and that's the world of apps, all right, where you actually download to your device, mobile device, an application to do something as opposed to going to a website. What do you suppose the advantages and disadvantages of an app versus a mobile website is? App is likely easier to use because it can be written in a very targeted way to target certain functionality and exclude everything else. To access a mobile website, you're accessing the web, which means you have to work through a browser, and you have to work through and I'm, uh, I put air quotes around this, the limitations of HTML. In other words, when you're working with an app, you're working with the, the native code of that device, which means that you can take advantage of some of all the neat features. Whereas if you're working with a mobile website, you're dealing with HTML and you have to sort of live with those limitations. One other advantage of an app is an app can provide you information even when you're not connected to the internet, depending on the specifics of the app and, and how it's written. Whereas a mobile website, you need to be connected to the internet. What's another advantage or disadvantage of an app versus a mobile website? Um, do as much. Um, that one is a judgment call. Depending on the particular app, sometimes you can do more because you can write code to take advantage of all the aspects of the, the device as opposed to the limitations of HTML. So that one could go either way. Yes? Okay, an app has minimal, minimal ads. Well, again, that is, a, that is a business strategy more than a technical issue. I mean, it, it's not that they couldn't put ads in apps as opposed to websites, it's that they, they chose not to, or their business model is not to. So yeah, that, that's a topic for another class to discuss, <laughs> all right? One issue with apps is how many of you have iPhones? How many of you have an Android device? Can you two run the same app? No. There may be for a particular app, such as Facebook or the Weather Channel or CNN or whatever, there may be an Android version of the app and an iPhone version of the app, but it's essentially two apps. So it's written in different code. That's the cost that you get for writing something specific for one platform, is you have to write it for every platform then. And what if you have a Windows phone? You may be out of luck if you're one of those two or three people in the world that have a Windows phone, all right? Uh, you might be out of luck. Or if you have a Blackberry, or if you have an old-fashioned flip phone, all right? You could be out of luck. With mobile websites, it's just, a, it's just another web page. As long as you have a browser that can connect to the web, you can access it. So 
the, the, the fact that web pages are more universal than apps is an advantage for web pages. One other problem is you don't have to install anything. You know, if, for example, if I wanted to uh, look at the weather, if I wanted to use an app to do that, I'd have to go to the App Store, download, look for a weather app, download it, wait for it to download, and then I could use it. Whereas with, uh, with a, uh, a mobile website, all I'd have to do is open up my browser and go to weather.com or whatever, whatever my favorite website was for weather, and I could see it. So you don't have to go through the process of downloading it. And the, the, from the perspective of the people creating the site, it's easy to update it. If you update a website, the next time someone goes and accesses that website, they get the new version. Whereas if you update an app, people again have to go and download the app to get the updates. Now, again, sometimes uh, apps can be updated automatically, and I know that, but still there's a process that happens. So keep that in mind that, that in addition to these mobile websites that we're talking about, there's also apps. And truth be told, an organization will typically do all of the above, because they don't want to leave any stone unturned, right? So. If I go to CNN.com, there's likely to be a mobile version of the site. All right? There is likely to be an iPhone app for it, and there's likely to be an Android app for it, and maybe some other platforms as well. So it's not a case of doing either or. Typically, organizations do both and, and gear their offerings to what they perceive the needs of the people are. Now, we were talking last time about writing web pages that worked uh, on a mobile device. And there's generally two strategies that can be taken, whereas you can write one web page that tries to accommodate everyone, or you can do like some websites and switch and send some people to a desktop version, send some people to a mobile version. We won't discuss that strategy in more detail other than to say that that is a strategy. I'm going to download the Opera mobile browser emulator. And that's a way to that's a way to, to emulate or to pretend that we have all these different mobile devices. And we can actually see on our desktop how a web page is going to look like in a mobile device. You can download it for free, and I, I suggest uh, you do that. And you can, this is another platform on which you can view your web pages. All right, I'm going to emulate uh, an HTC Desire. I can launch it. And here's a little welcome message. You have to do this the first time. But notice how this emulates what a mobile browser screen might look like. So let's go to a couple pages. Let's go to CNN. You know what? I'm, I'm not even going to do this. I don't want to see news today. <laughs> let's, let's do something. Maybe I don't want to see weather today either. <laughs> All right, here's weather.com. All right, let's go and access weather.com via our mobile emulator. Now, this is going to act like it's a mobile device, specifically the HTC Desire. Now, notice, I don't know if you noticed anything real quick, let me try to get it back up. It asked me to share location, and yeah, okay. Notice that it changed my URL on me. 
it says m.weather.com. And that's a common thing, and it's a common prefix. In other words, the desktop browser, I typed in weather.com. The I typed in the identical URL in the mobile browser, and it switched it for me. It did a redirect. Essentially, what there is, is there is, on the web server, there's a little piece of software that works sort of like a traffic cop, so when directing traffic. And it looks at each request that comes in, and it can identify whether the request came from a desktop browser or a mobile browser. If it's a desktop browser, the traffic cop directs them to the regular page. If it's a mobile browser, it directs them to the mobile page. All right? And in that way, again, keep in mind that um, people visiting a desktop page are likely to have, maybe have different goals than people visiting from a mobile. If I visit from a mobile page, I might want to know, you know, what's the weather going to be later today? Like, I'm on my way out the door to work. What kind of jacket should I wear? Should I bring an umbrella? Do I need, you know, do I need my window scraper for my car? You know, all those sorts of things. So notice how when you go to there, it's very obvious what the weather is. It's right in your face. And then down here, they have some other weather-related news. And they also advertise their apps down there as well that you can download. Whereas here, because they have more real estate, they can put the weather information, your weather forecast, in a prominent position. But then they also have a lot of other space for stuff that isn't necessarily related to us about a tropical storm, all right, a rare solar event, and so on. So in this case, again, there's some code that's written in some server-side scripting language that looks at each request and sends you one way or the other, depending on that. Now, we're not going to explore that, this strategy, because um, it's actually very simple to implement. There's a couple lines of code just to look at the request and send you one way or another. We're not going to investigate this strategy. We're going to investigate the strategy of trying to make our web page work across different platforms. Let's pick another site. And let's see. Oh, I didn't want that. I want EDU. Yeah. Yeah, well, n notice that their mobile site works identical to their desktop site. All right. Um, they would do well to sign up for one of my classes if you are out there from CSU and you're watching this YouTube video. Because if you access this on a mobile phone, that's almost impossible to, add, to, 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 to use this as it is without zooming in and, and things like that. So they tried the one size fit all, but they weren't very successful at it. Um, let's try another one. Well, we'll that's what we're going to look at. That's the topic of today's. That's a, right. Ah, here we go. Here's a good one, I think. Notice the URL is the same. So they didn't do anything funny to redirect me. Yet, it obviously looks different. Okay, what is the sorcery? How are they doing that? Well, where have we seen examples before of where two web pages can have the same content but look way different? Well, with with the padding, but, but in general terms, via CSS. So they are simply applying different CSS to the same page. At least that's what it appears that they're doing. All right. And it's the same content, 
but it's formatted differently. And it's formatted in a way that's more readable. For example, here, they take advantage of the wide screen and they put the image here and the text here. In the mobile version, the image is here. Cut the guy's head off, which is probably not a good idea, but... And then they have the text underneath it. So this is what we're going to look at today, how to do this sort of thing, where we have different style sheets that apply in different situations. So I'm going to download an example that does this, maybe to a more simplified level, but still it does this to demonstrate how it's done. Whenever you hear, you know, someone saying that the page is going to look different depending on mobile or, or desktop, if it's the same content, look different, that should immediately spark in your head CSS, all right? Because CSS is what allows us to control the way the page looks. This also reinforces the need to eliminate any of that stuff in HTML that could affect the performance. So we're going to get rid of any break tags, BR tags. Uh, if you don't know what those are, good. Don't use them, all right? But break tags put additional spaces in the, in, in the content. And why don't you use them? Because you can do that just as well or better with margins and padding and so on. So let me download the example that I have for this and we'll take a look at it and we'll see how how we do it. I'm on the ball today. I have the example loaded before class. Ooh. I actually have the same code, or virtually the same code, twice with these kind of confusing names on them. And we'll talk a bit about the names later on. But the one folder is called Graceful Degradation. The second one is called Progressive Enhancement. These are two strategies that you can have for making mobile and web pages that have the same content, but each are optimized for the respective platform. So what's going to be our guiding principles here. You already know two-thirds of this. All right, we just haven't applied it in this context yet. Number one, we're going to be using flexible stuff. So we're not going to be doing too many sizes in pixels. We are going to be using percentages. We're going to be floating. And we're going to do this for images and other multimedia. So we could do this for videos if we had videos. I have multi-videos because I was talking as I was writing. Multimedia. The last and the missing piece, though, that we're going to talk about today is what are called media queries. And that's sort of the magical part. That's the part that we haven't talked about yet. Media queries is what allows us to tell the browser, here's how you decide which style sheet to use. Use this style sheet under a normal desktop browser. Use this style sheet in a mobile device. So let's look at this using progressive enhancement. I have a page. Again, it's not meant to be the greatest page ever. But let's view this page in the Chrome browser. Keep in mind this is done for demonstration purposes. This is not meant to be um, you know, held up as a great example of web design. But 
as you can see, what's the difference between, or, or what, what, well, what, I'm going to ask you what's the difference between this and the mobile one. I haven't showed you the mobile yet. So let's look at the mobile, then we can see what the difference is. Same HTML page. Let's look at the differences. Difference number one, there's no background image on the mobile, on the mobile version. Difference number two, the links are oriented horizontally and not vertically. All right, notice in the desktop version, the links go this way. In the mobile version, the links go this way. There is no image. The image disappeared in the mobile version. And in the mobile version, we have a single column rather than three columns. These are all typical things that you might do on a mobile device. In general, you're making it simpler. Why are you making it simpler? You're making it simpler because, number one, your mobile device is smaller. And therefore, harder to view images. Um, you want it to be more straightforward. You don't want it a lot of scrolling. You, you want just, in general, a simpler look on a mobile device. Plus, our goals are more directed in mobile. You know, we're, not, we're, we're there just for the information. We're less concerned about the aesthetics of it. All right. So let's look at the code that does this. Now, if we look at this, we're going to have a boatload of style sheets. For this one page, there's actually five style sheets. I'm sorry, four style sheets. One of them we know from before. This is our Firefox fix style sheet. So that's this one. It simply goes and it makes those particular tags work as block tags. So this is a generic one. This isn't specific to this project. This is for all of them. Likewise, we have the HTML5 shiv, which is not a style sheet, but it, it has uh, JavaScript in it that does the same thing for IE. So what we're interested in is we actually have three style sheets written specifically for this page. Now let's look to see how they're used. So let's open up the HTML document and see how we're using these three style sheets. it a little bit smaller. Okay. We have one style sheet called base that looks like all the style sheets that we've used previously. We then have two, we have our Firefox fix style sheet too. And actually, we have one extra style sheet that I don't need. I actually don't need this mobile style sheet. I was mistaken about that. OK, that's what we're going to look at now. Notice what I have. Notice the difference between these two links. This one has a different attribute, the media attribute. This is what is called a CSS media query. This is what tells the browser when to apply this style sheet. What's included, included in the quote says, essentially, apply this only to computer screens, not mobile devices. And computer screens where the minimum device width is at least 
600 pixels wide. Well, most monitors typically are far bigger than, than 600, all right? So if it's not a computer screen, if it's a mobile device, it will not get this style sheet. So, how does this work? Everyone gets the base style sheet. Desktop devices get this style sheet in addition. Oh, and also we have the Firefox Fix one, but we're really mainly interested in these two. You can have more than one style sheet per file, per page. What happens then? It cascades. You know, you think it cascades like a waterfall. The, the water from the top goes down and covers the stuff going down from the bottom. The way this works is, essentially, we define some rules in the first style sheet, and then we overrule those rules in the second style sheet, but only under certain conditions. So let's look at the first style sheet, the base style sheet. The base style sheet is a style sheet that everyone gets. The body has a font family of Helvetica Arial Sans Serif. The header has a width of 100% border, one pixel solid black. The nav has a width of 100% border, one pixel solid red. Nav LI has a display style of inline. Nav UL has list style type of none. The section has a width of 100%, a border of one pixel solid yellow, and the section image has a display of none. What does a display of none do? It makes it so you can't see the image. So, It's, base is like the starting point. It's like the, yeah, it's like, it's like the, the starting point, the base that you're building upon. Yes. That's why in the mobile version, nothing is displayed. Okay, because everyone gets this style rule. Oh, everyone gets this style sheet and these style rules. Only the desktop gets the second one. And the second one is going to overrule the first one. The second one is going to say, hey, here's our starting point. This is on the most simple browser that uses CSS, this is what we're going to have. So typically that's going to be a mobile device. This is what we're going to get on mobile devices. And for desktop people, we're going to add on these style rules. And these style rules will, will account for the changes between the desktop version and the mobile version. That's why it's called progressive enhancement. All right? We start with the most basic, baseline, simplest style sheet. And we add on stuff to it. We enhance it if they're on a more powerful platform. OK. So the base style sheet says those things. And those things will apply to the desktop version, too. Notice that the borders are still there, right? They're still the same color as they are in the, in the uh, uh, mobile version. The navigation still has a red border. The header still has a black border. The two sections still have yellow borders. But there's some additional stuff in there, too. And that additional stuff comes from this second style sheet. And if we look at that style sheet, here's where we see the differences that we want on the desktop. For example, I change the font color to white. So notice that the font color in the mobile version is black. On the desktop version, it's white. Why? Well, because the desktop style sheet overruled the base style sheet. All right. Likewise, we have a different font family. We have Garamond and Serif. And finally, we overruled and we have a background image for it. That is this guy.
our navigation we overruled and made the width 30% instead of 100%. We put the minimum width as 200 pixels and we floated it to the left. Nav Li, we changed to the display being black. Our links, we changed to having a text color of white. Our section, we changed to have a width of 30%, a minimum width of 200 pixels, and float to the left. And finally, the image, we've defined as having a display type of inline. So all these things in this style sheet change some of the rules that we set in the other style sheet. So this gets to be kind of complicated and, and it requires a little bit of thought. But essentially in your base or your simplest style sheet you define the simplest rules for a mobile device. And then through progressive enhancement you add on some things that only get applied in these situations. This is again what's called a media query. It's a test that says should I apply this style sheet as well. And the way this test is worded, this style sheet only gets applied to desktop browsers. It doesn't get applied to mobile devices. Yes? Yes. Exactly. And do that. That's, that's a great question. What if I didn't have anything about the image in the desktop style sheet? What if I took that out? It will not display either on the desktop or there or the mobile. Why is that? Because again, remember. For the mobile device, this style sheet and this style sheet only applies. For the desktop version, this style sheet and this style sheet both apply. And if we don't say anything in this style sheet then, the rules that we define in that style sheet stay in effect. And it's, it's simply a positional thing. In other words, Why does this overrule this one? Because it's later. If I switch these around, we're going to get a very different result. Yeah. If I go and save that. Now that's funny. That's sort of a none of the above. Why is that? Well, It applied this, and then this guy overruled the rules in this one. Now, why doesn't this look identical to the mobile? Well, we didn't say anything about the background in the mobile style sheet. Therefore, the rule for the background in the desktop style sheet still holds. So remember, if you have two rules for the same thing, the second one applies. If you don't have a rule in one of the style sheets, then that applies um, in, in, in whether it's in the first one or the second one. You had a question? Okay. Yes. Yes. In other words, if you're Yeah, if you're if you're doing a mobile site and you want to use this technique, progressive enhancement, you will need two style sheets. And in one style sheet you will have your basic rules that applies to everyone, and then in your second style sheet you'll have the stuff that is distinct to desktop. Yes. Yes. You, you 
can change that. You could actually take this even farther. You could, depending on the size of the monitor, you could apply a different style sheet. So a small monitor, you could apply a style sheet, and a gigantic monitor, I don't know if you ever, you know, like the big HD ones, you know, you could apply another style rule. So 601, that's just a, uh, uh, this rule is kind of goofy. This part of it should be enough to test for mobile versus computer screen. But unfortunately, some mobile devices lie, <laughs> all right? You, you never realize your phone might lie to you, right? But some mobile devices lie, and some mobile devices say they're computer screens. So that's why we throw in the catch, well, if it's smaller than that, it's probably a mobile device that's lying, <laughs> all right, if that makes any sense. But you could do that, and you could, again, this is, this is sort of the, the most basic scenario, whereas we have two situations that we want to cover, a mobile and a desktop. But you could write, by adding more style sheets and more media queries, you could really enhance it to where on a very basic phone, like the old-fashioned flip phones, it looks one way with the most simplistic styling. On a smartphone that has a bigger screen, it could look a second way. On a desktop, it could look a third way. And then on a desktop with a gigantic monitor, it could look a fourth way, simply by adding style sheets and the appropriate media queries. Questions? Now notice that I also included this link to the second style sheet as part of the HTML5 shiv. That is because if they're running a version of IE less than 9, they are probably on a desktop machine, in which case I can assume that they should get the desktop style sheet. Now this technique is known as progressive enhancement because we start with the base and then we add stuff onto it for the more powerful platforms. The, re the reverse of this is kind of a phrase that sounds goofy, but the reverse of this is graceful degradation. And graceful degradation means you start with the full version of the site and then you whittle away to get a version that works for mobile. And we'll see the exact same techniques used but sort of moving in the opposite direction. Well, let's go and let's look at the graceful degradation. All right, a little bit different example. I don't have the background pattern. But here's how it looks in the full version. The mobile version. Looks like that. What is the difference? The difference is, using this technique, everyone gets the full version's CSS, and then we have a second style sheet that whittles away for mobile devices. And we have a different media query for that. And that media query, if we look at it, will apply the second style sheet. And all I did in this example is I didn't show the image on a mobile device. So the philosophy is the same, but it's coming from two different directions. 
With progressive enhancement, you start at the baseline of the simplest version of the site, the simplest mobile version of the site, and then you write a second style sheet to add stuff onto that simple version. With graceful degradation, you start with the most complicated version of the site, the, the most full-featured version of the site, and then you whittle stuff away. In general, when would you use each of these? If you're doing a site from the ground up, you're probably better off using progressive enhancement. All right? Because, for one thing, that will force you into thinking about what's really essential for your site and what's really essential for the mobile site. Secondly, if you think about it, it sort of makes sense. An analogy I read somewhere is, let's say you're making snacks for a party, right? And you wanted to provide your party guests with three different kinds of snacks, all right? Peanuts, chocolate-covered peanuts, and M&M peanuts, all right? Those are three snacks that you're going to have. You can take two different approaches to get that, right? One approach you could take is you could buy a bag, uh, buy a gigantic bag of chocolate, uh, or, or buy a gigantic bag of uh, peanut M&Ms, and divide it into thirds. And one group is your chocolate, or is your peanut M&Ms. You just put those in a bowl. The second group you take and you chip away the candy coating, leaving the chocolate-covered peanut, and that's your second group. The third group, you chip away the candy coating, melt away the chocolate, and you're left with plain peanuts. The other approach to take would be, again, assuming that you're not just going to buy, you know, all three of them, but you could take peanuts, a group of peanuts, divide them into thirds, dip one third of them in chocolate, dip the other third in chocolate, and then candy coat them, and then you'd have the three different things. The idea is that it's better to think in terms of what I want to add on to something than trying to chip away, you know. If you chip away, if you try to make chocolate-covered peanuts by chipping away at a peanut M&M, you're liable to chip away a bit too much chocolate, or you're liable to leave a little piece of the candy coating there, right? And it's not going to be as clean as if you start with the basic and add on. I hope that wasn't a ridiculous analogy. It works for me, anyhow, all right? The idea, though, is that it's easier to take and add stuff on than chip stuff away, all right? Now, when would you use graceful degradation? Well, let's say I was Cleveland State right about now, and they're watching this video, and they say, oh, my God, I never realized our site looks that way on a mobile device. Well, I have this site, and it's completed, I don't want to go back to ground zero and redevelop the whole site from the ground up. So I'm going to take that full version that I know that works, and I'm going to create a second style sheet to chip away some of the stuff to make a mobile version of it. So if you have a completed desktop site, then maybe you want to use the techniques of graceful degradation to chip away and make a, a mobile version of the site that works by taking away some of the elements and changing some of the elements of the full version of the site. But generally speaking, if you're building from the ground up, you want to, um, you're probably better off using the progressive enhancement method. Now, there's a whole slew of other techniques that you can do. We don't talk about server-side scripting in this class, but there's a whole bunch of things that you can do via server-side scripting to make the request specific to the platform that the person is accessing it on. You can go even far beyond this, both via server-side scripting and via client-side scripting. For example, this isn't related directly to mobile, but, and I think I talked about this before, if I go and Google Indian restaurants. Now, 
Notice what it shows me is it shows me one in Westlake, one in North Olmsted, one in Parma Heights, and one in Cleveland. All right? Now, do you think really that the best, the four best Indian restaurants in the world are not somewhere in India, but are in Westlake, North Olmsted, Parma, and Elyria, or Cleveland? Probably not. This web page, through server-side scripting techniques, was able to figure out approximately where we are and geared our search results to that. Well, this can also be used with mobile development to this server-side scripting to look at where the person is and gear the results towards them. For example, let's say I'm a, let's say I'm a, 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 a motel chain or a hotel uh, chain, you know, Holiday Inn. I have, a mo I have a mobile website that when I access it, it shows me the closest Holiday Inn. Why? Well, it's very reasonable if someone's taken a long trip by car and they're at a gas station and they call up my site, they very well may be looking for, gee, where's the closest one I can stay at? And in that case, it can take and it can gear the results to the fact that I'm in Kansas City versus I'm in New Orleans versus I'm in Maine or something like that. All right? So there's a lot of other techniques that you can use in addition to just the basic things that I had here that can take and make a mobile page even better than just a smaller version of the, the full version of the page. Sort of the techniques that we're talking about here that, that, I, that I emphasized here in class are sort of talking about making your mobile page a smaller version of your regular page. But there's other stuff that you can do too, like that, making it location sensitive. That's great when a mobile, a mobile web page is sensitive to your location and it tells you where you are. Another thing that you could do is you could actually make it. If I'm on a mobile phone, instead of displaying the phone number, I can make it so if I press that, it dials the phone for me. Right? That's a great convenience. So instead of having to write down the phone number or copy and pasting it or whatever, I can just click on that. Those kinds of things require server-side scripting now, and we don't talk about them in this class. We, will, we do talk about them in CISS 268, which is mobile web development. This sort of uses what we talked about today in class as a springboard to go off into some of the other techniques that you could use, including redirecting based on the device type and including server-side scripting to make it location dependent and looking at what the device is and making a link that actually calls via the phone instead of um, displays a phone number. There's also a slew of JavaScript based techniques that we can we can use as well. Alright? So this by no means is the final word in mobile web design, but it's a good first word for mobile web design. Any questions? If I'm not mistaken, are we okay in North Ridgeville? All right. Get, I got two thumbs up today. I was, must have been twice as good today. All right. Um, all right. Uh, do keep in mind that your design for your project is coming up. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, project, remember. Well, we talked about the design. There was an example of it. That's where you define the goals of the site, define the requirements for the site, do the... That's like in Word, that's a document. Except for the prototype. The prototype should be in HTML. And the prototype is a rough draft. You can look on the syllabus to see when it is due. It's due probably, it's not due this week, I know that. So you can breathe a sigh of relief. And it's not due next week, I don't think. But it might be due the week after that. I don't know. Uh, I put the stuff out there so that you can read it on your own and I don't have to remember it because I don't remember stuff as well as I used to. All right? All right, time for lab. <laughs>